Hello everyone and welcome back to another Teachable Moments video. And in this game that I'm showing right here, I came across a really powerful area that I was able to run the killer around. So the Teachable Moment here is being able to recognize strong areas that can give you a good safety net when being chased by a killer. Now the point of these areas is that the killer will catch you eventually, but it takes so much time that the killer has to decide if they actually want to commit that time into catching you or not. And if the killer is not a very good killer, you can even get away from them utilizing these strong areas. Now this map here, Haddonfield, is a map that can often generate strong survivor sided running areas. Because it's just the map that I come across the most survivor sided things on more than any other map. You could say maybe bottom, but in bottom preschool, it's not random generation that makes the map strong. It's just the preschool and the pallets around the preschool. But Haddonfield, on the other hand, it has a lot of random generation that can put the map in the survivor's favor. Now, occasionally it can be killer sided as well, or just a balanced uh, mix of both killer and survivor sided areas. But this variation I got here is definitely a very strong survivor sided generation. Now, I will explain what makes this area I'm running the killer around so strong. So first of all, we have a long fence, and the fence isn't just a short fence, it's tall, which means it breaks line of sight. And breaking line of sight is very important because it gives you the opportunity to break bloodlust if the killer messes up. If the killer doesn't constantly keep on your tail, they can lose bloodlust because that break in line of sight will drop the chase. Next up, there is a window right in front of me across this fence and then to the right of the window is a gap the killer ha can go through. So if the killer wants to chase me, they have to walk all the way around the window to that gap and then continue chasing me. They can't vault the window because then they would potentially lose bloodlust and killer vault speed is kind of slow so it's always better for the killer to go through the gaps in most cases, which this killer does so they know at least that much, to chase me through. So that extra space can buy me time against the killer. And finally, what makes this area strong is that there are two nearby pallets. So on this first area here, as I'm approaching the window, there is a pallet to my right next to the house. You can't see it super well because I didn't turn my camera over there, but there is a pallet over there. And then as I jump the window and go around next to that rock, there is another pallet. So even if the killer happens to start catching up to me, I can go for one of those pallets, make more distance. And additionally, once this area has lost its convenience, I can go towards the front of the houses or to the sides of the map where there are more pallets and things for me to use to get away from the killer. So now let's go through the entire chase I had with this killer. I just want to say that at the beginning of the game, the killer chased me through this area as well, but I forgot to turn on my recording software, so luckily I did get chased again during this match and was able to show you guys this really strong area. So starting from the very beginning of the chase, the Leatherface finds us on a generator and I run away so he does not chainsaw hit me. Now I think he's chasing Meg at this point, so I'm trying to figure out what is going on because I want to get that gen done. I hear the heartbeat approaching, so I figure he's coming towards me, and then I see him. So I'm going towards this house because I know that there are pallets in the basement, and at least one pallet on top I can use. And he decides to come to the basement. I get the stun, and then I take this chance to go to the area I was at at the start of the game. Because I know that area is a really strong area I can kite him a really long time at. So I, I beeline towards that area. I don't even look behind me because I know he's chasing me. I slow vault just in case he lost me. 
and I crouching here just hoping he doesn't see me, but he does see me. So I use my sprint burst to go around and take the window again. And he decided to vault the window that time for some reason, which was not the smartest idea. I notice he is starting to catch up a little, so I decide to go for the pallet instead, and I tried to mind game him by making him think I went around again, but he decided not to check. I made a mistake there, I should have thrown the pallet, but the killer makes an even bigger mistake and gets greedy for the chainsaw. So if that killer had not chainsawed me, he would have 100% got a hit there. And then here, I'm gonna run straight and then walk to the right, hoping he'll follow my scratch marks straight and not notice. Now here, I'm pretty sure the killer stopped chasing me because the gates got powered, and since I have not been injured yet, it's useless trying to chase me when he can put pressure on the exit gates. So you can see how you can use an area such as this to kite a killer long enough to make them lose interest, or just use it for a really long time so that by the time you go down, your team has finished the generators. So being able to recognize these strong areas where you can run killers around is very important to your survival. Now these kind of areas are not in every map and they do not happen all the time, but when they do happen, it is important to recognize that area and then use it to your advantage if the killer decides to chase you. Like I said, Haddon Field is one of those maps that these kind of areas tend to happen quite frequently, so this is the map I would look for them the most on. But they can happen on other maps where you can get very favorable generations that just give survivors a ridiculous advantage against the killer. So remember, what makes areas strong is that they create a lot of distance between you and the killer, they have the potential to break line of sight, which breaks bloodlust, and then they have good window placement, good pallet placement, and then good open doorway areas that the killer has to go through in order to keep chasing you. It is always important to also be aware of what is near you outside of that strong area because eventually the killer will catch up to you, so you need a place to go to once that has happened. So like I said, on that particular instance, I knew there was pallets in the front of the houses as well as to the side there in the picnic area there was also a pallet there that I could keep running the killer around if he had decided to continue chasing me and I still had those two pallets up for grabs around that loop area I was using. And that is my teachable moment for you, being able to recognize strong areas to run the killer around. I hope you have found this information helpful and that you can utilize it in your own survivor games. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, good luck out there in the fog, and see you next time.